like them live. You know, other people can like them live as well. Yeah. If they watch us live on TikTok when we record the podcast and when we do our magic gathering new strands. So far, and on in the future, that would certainly be the ideal situation. Is that entirely necessary? Entirely. Well. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> didn't realize we were a part of the uh, oh, Stooges. Looney Tunes. Three Stooges. Was that the Stooges? Yeah, that was Curly. Oh, certainly. I don't like that. I don't like the Three Stooges. I'm not particularly fond of their antics. If I'm being completely honest. You should lie more. I love you. Good job. Thank you. Anyway, I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. And we are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. We are, in fact, in a spare bedroom. A well-lit spare bedroom currently. A somewhat well-lit. Due to spare bedroom. extra lighting. We do have auxiliary lights, for sure. But this, on our Lord's Day, the 36th episode of the Dungeon Bros podcast, the D&D movie apparently is very good. Yeah. It's getting some good reviews out there. I'm not saying I'm surprised, per se. I just didn't think it would be as well received as it is currently. And we, along with many other people, will be able to watch it soon. Early, sooner, even. Sooner than normal. Early, even. Which is fascinating. That being said, we are TikTok creators. We are. And there's a little bit of, a little bit of scuttlebutt going around to the old D&D community right now. As there often is. But as there often is. This is, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad, bad. Uh, many of you might know Maisie, Maisie Lynn. She does a lot of wonderfully entertaining TikToks. She has a live play D&D show where she, I believe, has DM'd uh, and played. Mm-hmm. Uh, very popular. Most people would probably know her if they are familiar with the D&D TikTok community from the Midwestern Dirty Talk series. Yes. Or Don't You Know and all that. Uh Serious accusations of uh, sexual assault from one of the one of the people that she was friends with from the D and D community that they had live play games with and uh, yeah that's I don't, I don't I don't have much to say beyond awful awful yeah don't don't do that uh, and you know there's a reason that Dumpstat Podcasts uh, account is private now yeah let's. So we we love we love Maisie. Yeah. She probably does not know who we are, but many many almost, almost impossible to know who we are. Exactly, that's nearly impossible. But the D and D community rallying behind the TikTok D and D community specifically, very tight knit group of people, which I find fascinating. Cat, what are you? She, is she eating the? She, why are you that? eating? Why are you eating Velcro? We're having a serious conversation right now. Anyway, yes, yeah, so our thoughts go out to her and. Um, yeah, as a, as a community, uh, I think this is a, an opportunity to say, everyone, do better. Yeah. Be less bad and be more not bad. We are not eloquent speakers, as you can Not think. at all. Not at all. We don't do serious things. So, the most the most serious thing we've done has been the OGL thing, and we were just, like, depressed That's for tired. a couple episodes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is much more depressing than that. And we don't know how to act. We do not have the emotional... Uh, yes. We've not been emotionally prepared for such a situation. Yes. Um, so it's also weird, because, like, we know her. We're big fans. She's very popular. Want, want the best for her and many other that she does content creation with. But, like, we don't want to be, like, the weird, like, oh, my gosh, we love Maisie, all this kind of, like, when it's like, who the fuck are these guys, you know? It's one. It's one of those weird parasocial relationships that it the is. internet creates. But we, we we just want to offer our support and and love and all of that. Anywho, moving on. Moving on. We've got. <laughs> we can we can talk about the D D movie premiere and the reviews later. But there's been a. I was always afraid of this trend when, like, the AI voice mm. things were happening. I'm like, oh, shit, we're never going to know what news is real, what's what's fake. Like, people are going to be making shit up, and it's going to cause so many problems societally. And instead, we're getting... <laughs> we're getting the best <laughs> possible outcome 
of this technology. I absolutely believe. at this stage, at this stage for sure. The number of presidents playing Magic the Gathering and presidents playing D and D apparently with Ben Shapiro, yeah, is fucking amazing. Like the the concept of. Ben Shapiro, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump playing Commander together is absolutely hilarious. Joe Biden missing his triggers. Uh, Trump being, Trump, Trump loving his uh, wall, wall tribal. <laughs> ben being the counterspell player. It's it's hilarious. Big fan. Highly recommend looking those up on YouTube if you have not they already. They are well worth the watch. Oh yeah, it's it's great. It's. <laughs> We've had many a chuckle. Um, one, of, one of my my work D and D game, they sent around the uh, the the D and D the presidents play D and D one where Ben mm-hmm. is the, the DM. Yeah, which by the way, the fact that Ben Shapiro is included in the presidents play X <laughs> thing when he's just like a guy, just a conservative guy that does media online, I think is very funny. He's also got a funny voice, so you know he does have he does have that goblin-y voice. He does have that for and, sure, and the way he, his cadence and candor mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Unmatched, if it, you will. It's entertaining. It is entertaining. It is highly entertaining. But Trump was a uh, was playing a paladin, and he uh, beheaded a dwarf because he thought it was an illegal immigrant. <laughs> I just, I can't. And then Joe Biden beseeching to, as the cleric, beseeching to their god to to fix it, and rolling a natural twenty. And of course, they were just like, "All right, well, let's hit the reset." And then Don's like. All right, I tried to behead her again. It's like, no, stop. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was highly recommend. Highly recommend. Uh, upcoming releases. We got March of the Machines, Magic the Gathering, coming out in little over a month from when this goes live. Uh, April 21st. We also have the Lord of the Rings first look we're going to get tomorrow as of recording this. Tomorrow, Tuesday the 14th. Yes, which we'll probably discuss plenty on the next episode of the podcast. Uh, with its release later in June 23. June 23rd. Yes. 23. Um, it's, it's, it's been a week. And then the recently announced Commander's Masters set will be dropping August 4th. Yes. The expensive if for the pre- yeah. on, uh, already. Uh, I, I'm just going to go out and say, maybe don't buy that one uh, in a box. Yeah, yeah we're going we're gonna to buy singles them. with that set. It's just... I get it. Look, there's some really cool reprints going to be coming. Yeah. There's some very powerful new cards that they've they've alluded to. Uh, but here's the thing. Do you really need all of those? Do you need to buy a $400 set booster? Because mm-hmm. I believe that's what I've seen some people posting it on, listing it on Amazon as for pre-release. It's too much. It's too much for 350 cards with a possibility of getting some good ones. Yeah, it's... I'm sure it'll be a cool set. It looks like the Commander Precons look interesting in their builds, um, but <laughs> they're going to skyrocket to like 80 bucks or something for those Precons, and at that point it's just don't. Just don't. Uh, yeah, it'll be just like the uh, Warhammer 40k Precons yeah. that got over to over $100 on release week, and then I've heard some people saying upwards of $200 at some point. Well, and it's like it's like... Oh, it's like eighty bucks at my local game store. They're trying to like hose me. Like, no, they have product and it has a going rate. And if they can charge more, they should because their stock is limited, just like everyone else's mm-hmm. when it comes to that stuff. So let's let's not let's not let's not attack the local game store. We yeah. love the local game store. We love the local game store. And if they provide singles, buy those. Yes. Instead. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now, the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves will be second to the D&D Community Update. You see, on March 8th, March 8th, on D&D Beyond, we have a community update for what to expect in 2023. They provide a nice little graphic and a little release schedule and all that kind of stuff. So, so far, what we know has been done. SRD 1.5 has been changed to Creative Commons. They put that as one of their community things that they've chosen to do. Mm Mm-hmm. They chose to do it because the community was outraged at them. Yeah, Fun fact. let's remember. Let's let's not forget that they've released four playtest packets for one D and D. The original rules with character creation. We've had most recently the druid and the cleric. We've or sorry, the druid paladin. and the paladin. We've had the cleric, and then we had the experts. Yep, rogue releases. ranger and bard classes. They've collected feedback uh, for three surveys on those. We're going to be getting the druid and the paladin. 
uh, survey coming up fairly soon, so be sure to check back on D&D Beyond for that. In progress, they're still localizing the system reference document version 5.1 in French, Italian, German, and Spanish. Uh, they have to review previous editions for the inclusion in Creative Commons, mm. which is interesting. Publish our, they need to publish internal content policy for D&D products and update the D&D core rules as well. All of this presumably do allow themselves to be more transparent after recent blowback, if you will. Upheaval. Upheaval. I'm, I'm intrigued by the reviewing previous editions for inclusion in Creative Commons, meaning like maybe we'll get 3.5 in Creative Commons or AD&D or... That'd be the, interesting. The beloved fourth edition. Bum, bum, ba, da. Yes, that was, a, that was a bit. And then their last column, upcoming Ensure 1 D&D rules updates are compatible with fifth edition and the system reference document, something that we assumed was going to be the case as they've said it multiple times. Kind of vague on the... Uh, on the reasoning there, but very well. Um, they have reiterated what they what to expect with their 1 D&D play tests. Revisions for all the classes in the 2014 Player's Handbook. 48 total subclasses. Revised species. They, they should just call them lineages or... The spe- as we've discussed previously. Yes. Species? Eh, I don't know about that. New and revised backgrounds, new and revised spells, new weapon options for certain classes. We've been aware of all of this. One of the big, the biggest, the biggest thing is their outline of 2023 community events. For the purposes of most people that would be watching the show as well, watching live on TikTok, the big one that you need to be made aware of is a D&D Direct, where you're going to be getting the latest news on D&D products, games, and more online sometime this month, March 2023. It would be really sucky if it happens tomorrow as we're recording, and then this goes live the day after. Oh, that would with, with the first looks for the Lord of the Rings Magic the Gathering set being on. Uh, well, because D and D Direct last year was both D and D. It was it was Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, um, whole thing. But yeah, last year we watched it, and there were they, they announced a lot of cool things. They announced the Warhammer during, stuff. Yeah, I believe. yeah, I believe so. But they announced a lot of cool things, uh, and then and then as we've talked about on this podcast before, man, there was just yeah, they put them out, but Thanks. there was no follow through of the hype and excitement yeah. that came along with the initial announcements of these things. Spell Spelljammer came out to mixed reviews, notwithstanding the whole Hadozi controversy. Uh, Dragonlance seems like it's a fine book, but nobody really was talking about it because yeah. of all the controversy surrounding them at the time. Same with Keys of the Golden Vault. It seems like a perfectly fine book that a lot of people don't want to talk about. So I wonder how they're going to spin this to try and get the hype train going. I'm, I personally, we should probably we should probably see a little bit more about what they want to do with one D and D, particularly the virtual tabletop, how they want to integrate D and D Beyond. Mm-hmm. You know, as as we discussed on a previous podcast, they should just make their own homebrew marketplace with like a great set of tools in the back end to create homebrew for one D and D in fifth edition, and then yeah. host it on D and D Beyond like they do on Drive Through RPG or the DMs Guild. Just, just cause, I mean, those websites are great. We yeah. we have our own homebrew on Drive Through RPG, but uh, it's very two thousand and eight. Yeah, level uh, they really website. Haven't need, they haven't updated in a while because um, they don't need to. Yeah. They don't need to do a rebrand when you're one of two websites on the internet that does that. Oh, yeah. Uh, some other some other events uh, they've announced. Learn to Play, Adventure Begins, DM Camp, UK Games Epic. Uh, just a whole, lot of, uh, a whole lot of various cons. A lot of them in uh, the United States and Canada. Some of them are in Europe. Uh, the big one for us, Gen Con in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. August 3rd to 6th. They have not specified what they're going to be doing, simply announcing that they're going to be there. Same with Fan Expo, Bid Bad Con, Geek Girl Con, Game Hole Con, PAX Unplugged, all of that. As well as various uh, local game store events to help learn to play D&D, learn to be a dungeon master, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, getting back into it. They have not appeared at Gen Con in several years, I believe. With the pandemic, because mm. they didn't have they didn't have an official presence True. per se at the last Gen Con that we went to, so it seems like they're returning to that. There have been there were Wizards of the Coast sponsored things, but Wizards of the Coast wasn't there. Yes, um, 
But yeah, we'll have to see how all of these play out. Uh, I do find, I mean, lo they're looking like they're actually trying to do some more community things between the learn to play mm -hmm. um, things, the DM camp, and the family friendly build a community together. Um, all different ways to increase uh, experiences among uh, the community. You know, teaching people to play D and D and or try to get people hyped about D and D once again. Mm -hmm. um, the, that event is also geared more towards children, and it seems like they're going to have exclusive kits designed for playing D and D with children as a family, mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Wonderful idea. Big fan. As as someone who is a coach of young teenagers and, and preteens. I would love a I would love a way to teach them how to play D D. Doesn't really work with anything that we're doing, but we're trying to do more like team bonding stuff, so you never know. I digress. Uh, the D D direct, we will certainly be doing the next episode of the podcast almost exclusively on that, I would bet. Uh, we, it's presumably going to have first look at the Lord of the Rings set, at uh, future Magic the Gathering sets. We've seen a little bit from March of the Machines. We're probably going to get proper spoiler season around then, too, for March of the Machines. Uh, get a bit more on uh, Big B Presents, the mm -hmm. Giants book, uh, the, the, the Book of Many Things, all that. The last the Lost few... Minds of Fandover full campaign update. Yeah, the, the last of the 5th edition D&D mm -hmm. &D books. Which, even though they last of the edition, will be still compatible with 1D&D &D coming out next year. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Now, the bulk of the news today is... Oh my, oh my. The bean has decided she wanted to stretch and open the door all the way open <laughs> to the spare bedroom. All right. Very good. Very good, cat. You're very cute and adorable. Well done. Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves uh, recently had its premiere, and the reviews are starting to pour in from crit critics on various outlets, including the wonderful aggregation site, The Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, known for its... Quality and never and uh, never insulted by anybody as a not at all review website not at all. Now, for a time, the tomato meter was at a hundred percent, as in all positive reviews. It has since gone down to ninety two and now eighty five percent positive, which is still very high. Yeah, I mean you can't expect everybody to like everything, which is fine. Absolutely, among their top critics, only one of them had a negative review. Uh, from RogerEbert.com, but Rolling Stones, Empire Magazine, Austin Chronicle, Mashable, The Playlist, Screen Rant, Awards Watch, uh, The Daily Beast, and many, many, many others have positive reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to view it at South by Southwest for opening night. Uh, they had their little red carpet premiere there as well with all the actors, and it there's been a lot of positivity around this movie, which I find a little bit surprising. I was... I wasn't expecting the movie to be bad, per se, but I wasn't expecting it to be as well-received as it has been. Yeah, I think this just speaks to the, I mean, the production and, and writing quality, because we've seen a lot of... There have been plenty of D&D movies in the past, and usually uh, they're hot piles of garbage. Yeah. Um, so for, especially modern day, 2023 critics, uh, you know, to be able to, to say it's good, it's fun, it's enjoyable really speaks to how much the uh, how much they were leaning they how much they were actually putting into the film as opposed to just leaning on it being D&D to sell. Yeah. Now, one of, one of the more universal things from the positive reviews I've been seeing has been Chris Pine's performance along with uh René Jean or René Jean Page, mm -hmm. Jean Saint Page. I I can never get his name right. I can't either. Apparently, their their performances have been very well, along with Hugh Grant, mm -hmm. uh, as, presumably as like an as not really a villain per se, but not really a good guy either. the The funniest thing are the negative reviews. One of one of them being like compare like the sure to be announced sequels may or may not be helmed by the current directors but you shouldn't be surprised if they get wrapped up into the MCU machine anytime soon like your negativity is because it's just kind of like a fun action movie that you are afraid is going to be MCUized into just like a universe yeah and now that movie gets reviewed that's this isn't Iron Man with freaking Nick Fury at the end doing the we're putting the Avengers together shit. Like, let's calm ourselves. Yeah, I mean, it 
and if you're complaining, yeah, this person's not complaining about the movie, but they're complaining about the state of the movie industry, the state of of writing things yeah. into big, expansive, never ending Disney esque. The most rugs, yeah. The most fair criticism I've seen is that the script has a little bit too much plotting or problems to be quote enchanting mm. for an audience member, but then they praise the cast, and it's like, well. I mean, for anyone that's played D and D, most people are not playing a critical role style D and D campaign where it's rich in plot. Which say what you will about Campaign Three. I mean, Matt Mercer is a very good DM and a very good storyteller. I, I along with many other people, have their problems with what where the direction of Campaign Three has been going. Feels a little bit unearned. Yeah, I kind of haven't listened quite a while due to the fact that I you it's, know it, dropped off ex- exactly. And it, we could we could talk about this another day, but most D campaigns aren't like that. No, absolutely not. Uh, that that one is made that as much as it's like oh it's their campaign it's made for TV. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the the last the top critic negative review from RogerEbert.com. Top critic from RogerEbert.com. Don't know what the fuck that website is. I've heard of... I assume it's in a website based around the idea of Roger Ebert. I guess. Original movie. I mean, if I'm if I'm going to take a critic's opinion more as more valid than the other, I'm probably going to lean more towards, like, the Rolling Stone or, like, any, any of these rant. screen rant. I would take screen rant over a fucking nobody that I've never heard of. Anyway, his... His main criticism was that he felt like the creators were faking what they love about the game instead of trying to translate it from one medium to another, which is, in and of itself, I think a fairly, I wouldn't say scathing, but seems like an insightful opinion, at the very least. Someone who cares about D&D a little bit. That's fair. Or at least they're very good at faking it. <laughs> it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird statement, um, because... Yes, as fans of D&D, I mean, we were seeing right from the beginning when they showed the druid turning into an owl bear. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, people making fun of that, complaining about that. But here's the thing, like, uh, we've everything we've seen has looked cool. Oh, and yeah. Whether or not it follows 100%, well, that's not the point of it. It's not It's not meant to, you're not meant to have your player's handbook and go line by line, like, yeah, the druid used the correct level 3 yeah. ability. Um, it's to make an interesting show based around a bunch of things that people already know. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same concept as the the um, the Legend of Vox Machina. Like they're using D and D abilities, but like it's not. They're not trying to follow D and D rules of like I can't cast a spell because I don't have spell slots, mm-hmm. or I can't do this. I can't. It it doesn't flow well, right? In an entertainment format that has a much more limited time frame. Than a game of D and D, which will last l- twice as long as this movie, and about as long as the entire run of the Legend of Vox Machina, which spans how many campaign sessions? Yeah, yeah, it, it's unrealistic. The big thing for you, the listener at home, when it comes to the D and D movie, when this podcast goes live on March fifteenth, you will have a total of probably about three days to get tickets to see. The Dungeons & Dragons movie two weeks early. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you will have access to see it on Sunday, March 19th at 2 p.m. the local time for wherever these theaters are. Over 1,200 theaters across the United States have announced that you can purchase up to 10 tickets via AdamTickets.com as an Amazon Prime member Mm -hmm. to go see the movie two weeks early. Marks Prime's first early access screening partnership since before the pandemic. Previous sneak peek programs include Aquaman, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Hotel Transylvania 3 as well. So Amazon's going back to their old ways of doing some previews. And I would argue this movie looks like it's going to be better than the top three other ones they, they've they done with Jumanji, what? Hotel Transylvania 3. Hotel Transylvania 3, the... The, the much beloved, and I don't remember anything after the first one. Hotel Transylvania 3, the retransiting. <laughs> Transylvanianing. 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 Two, two hotel, two Transylvania. Wouldn't it be three to hotel, three Transylvania? The, the <laughs> Hotel Transylvania 3, Tokyo Drift. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yes, you can go see it early. If you have an Amazon Prime membership, you can go to adamtickets.com. Sam and I are undecided. We'll see. There might be some scheduling conflicts. We might have to fight a Hydra in order to get into the theater in the first place. So Indeed. We, we, we might be unable to. Indeed. We bo- I believe we both probably have D&D games. I believe we Standing do. dates on, on, the, on the Sundays. But worry not. We shall see the D&D movie and we will. give our scathing reviews. Absolutely scathing. Regardless, it will be premiering worldwide on March 31st. Last little bit of the D&D movie. If you go to dndbeyond.com, if you have an active D&D Beyond account, regardless of if you are subscribed or not, as many people have subs- unsubscribed, as they probably should have. Unsubscribed. As they have unsubscribed, you can go and there is a link for the Thieves Gallery under the Sources tab. The Thieves Gallery you can download and add to your account as a free collection of stat blocks in a presentation that is similar into the Monster Manual featuring characters from the Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie, including the tiefling Doric, a wood elf druid who has... Oh boy. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Do they have... Change shape as a bonus action. Can magically transform into a beast with challenge rating of three or less or into an owlbear. <laughs> very very specific in your very, Interesting. You got interesting. Down. You got the fiery rebuke. You got some spell casting with some you know, beast sense. Speak with animals. Cure wounds. Entangle. Your, 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 your standard druid things. Uh, has several several melee attack. Or melee spell attack and a ranged weapon attack. With the shaped claw and the sling. Kind of druid, kind of more leaning towards the combat wild shape kind of vibe. More than the druid spellcasty vibe, which I think is totally fine. Uh, Edgin Darvis. This is the bard. This is Chris Pine. Chaotic good. Multi-attack. He has... He can make two reinforced loot or short sword attacks. The reinforced loot is just bludgeoning plus thunder damage, Same, and his short sword adds thunder damage as well. Disorienting words can taunt up to three creatures within 60 feet of himself. Uh, wisdom saving throw, DC 15, or take 3d6 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the start of his turn. Mm. That's actually a pretty sweet ability. It's not a little bad little thing right there. It is, it is an action. And then he also gets friends, message, charm person, disguise self, suggestion. Your bard, your bard standbys, along with the inspiring words as a reaction Ooh. three times a day. Thrice a day. Thrice a day. Forge, oh gosh, Hugh Grant's character, Forge Fitzwilliam. I. That's a D&D name. That's a, that's a, that is a D&D ass name. Neutral evil. Neutral evil. Doesn't have a class associated with it. Disarming charm, double cross, evasion, dagger, heavy crossbow, uh, cunning ac- a cunning action, dash, disengage, hide. So more of a rogue. rogue and, then, yeah. and then the uncanny dodge. Uh, does it include... It includes poison damage on the weapon attacks. So it doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have the, uh, the, the sneak attack feature. But this disarming charm sets his... Or, while for disarming charm, while Forge isn't wearing armor, his AC includes his charisma modifier, mm. which is an interesting thing, giving him an AC of seventeen. That's pretty good. Yes. Next, Holga Kilgore. Now that that's that a is name. D and D name. If you ever heard one, that is a D and D name. Chaotic good, medium humanoid. Got the got the reckless attack. Got the unarmored defense. Got the special equipment with the dark steel. A great axe. Ooh. Improvised weapon. So you're kind of your tavern brawler barbarian. No rage, interestingly enough. No rage, but it has an AC. She has an AC of fifteen for the unarmored defense. I'm in, I'm intrigued that there's no rage option in the stat block. I guess the, I guess maybe this she's barbarian just always angry. Maybe 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 That's my secret cap. Uh, one of the few that doesn't that the for whatever reason the picture of him is be- below the stat block. Simon Almar. Suffers from the weight of his family name. As a sorcerer, chaotic good. You got the Fey ancestry. Uh, you got the special equipment, the bag of holding, the sending stones, the deathly token. See spell casting feature. Has wild magic. You got the quarter scat staff. Got the chaos bolt. Spell casting. Roll a d6 on a roll of one. Simon must roll on a wild magic surge table in the player's handbook on a roll of two or higher. They cast one of the following spells using their charisma modifier. Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Prestigitation, Speak with Dead. Simon must be holding the Deathly Token to cast that spell. That seems like a plot thing. 
I mean, I've seen that scene like uh, it's big in one of the trailers recently, yeah, maybe the Super Bowl trailers. trailer, I think. I think maybe. It's a very funny bit. <laughs> oh, it's a great bit. Great bit. Your fog cloud, your maid armor, magic missile, all that kind of stuff, and the sheltering shield reaction. So just, I think it's just shield. No, when Simon or another creature you can see within 10 feet of himself would take damage, he conjures a shimmering 10-foot radius sphere, gives the creatures inside resistance to the damage that triggered the reaction. Interesting. These are some pretty good abilities that, uh, yeah. a little different, a little bit, uh, you know, I might might steal these and, and chuck them out of player if I Shel- start running a game again. Sheltering Shield, I think, is just like a good... I think that's a great level one reaction spell to tie in with, not maybe not to tie in with shield, but as sort of another option other mm-hmm. than the shield spell. But there are definitely a lot of interesting features and abilities that should be pulled for homebrew purposes. Sophina, a red wizard of Thay, an elite practitioner of magic. Neutral evil wizard. You got the special equipment... Magic robes, and she has bonuses to her AC and shit. Uh, can make three necrotic strikes. 5d10 plus 5 necrotic damage on a hit, plus 10 to hit. Reach of 5 feet or a range of 120 feet. That is it. Well, I think that's a more powerful basic attack than the Lich gets. I believe it might be. You got spell casting at will, mage hand, message, prestidigitation, twice a day, bestow cursed, big beast hand, dimension door, mage armor, autolux resilience sphere, thunder wave, and once per day, Avard's black tentacles, finger of death, and time stop. Big oof. Big oof. Swarm of meteors, once per day, calls down a meteor swarm that detonates in four 40 foot radius spheres, one centered on a point within one mile of herself. Each one centered on a point she can see within one mile of herself. Each creature in one of these spheres must make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw, taking 10d6 fire and 10d6. But this is meteor swarm. Yes. Don't know why they chose to break it out. Probably because she's trying to cast it in the movie. And Possibly. thus wanted to break it out. Uh, as a bonus action, she can also summon wraith once per day, creating a wraith using the stat block in the monster manual mm, so there's not, not the wraith from apex legends no no no, no that'd be not, cool no she's 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 not wraith from the apex legends with the smaller hitbox and the little kunai yeah. knife that's her, right. that's her yeah her thing and i believe lastly but yes, not leastly well, not leastly at all zenk yendar raised in the nation of thay swore an oath of devotion an oath an oath of devotion I can speak today. I'm a little bit sick after swimming, in case you can't tell. To aid the innocent. The words, neither virtue nor blade shall break, are etched in celestial on the blade of his dagger sword. What? He's a lawful good, medium-sized humanoid. You see, dagger sword made me think he was going to be like a halfling or a gnome or something. Right. That, but no, he's nope, just, okay. he's yeah. just a guy. He's just a guy. Just a guy. Uh, got the half plate, got the aura of protection, giving him giving him and allies within 10 feet advantage on saving throws. The multi-attack, you can use his dagger sword. Oh, he makes three dagger sword attacks and uses dagger sword flourish. Can replace the dagger sword flourish with cleansing touch if it's available. Interesting. Long sword, short sword and dagger broken up differently. The dagger sword flourish. Choose the option that corresponds to the dagger sword's current form. So the dagger sword oh, is change. shifting between yeah. long sword, short sword, and dagger. That they is interesting. They could have given it a cooler name than I, dagger sword. I agree. The long sword. Zank magically detaches the long sword's blade from its hilt, launching the blade at a creature he can see within 30 feet of himself. The target must make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw on a failed save. They are impaled by the blade, taking 3d6 plus 4 piercing damage and is knocked prone. At the end of the current turn, the blade magically reattaches to its hilt. The short sword and dagger versions, Zank lashes out with both weapons. So the short sword and dagger, so it becomes one weapon as a long sword, it splits into two. For short sword and dagger. Okay. That's actually really cool. Each creature of his choice within 10 feet of him must make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 7, 2d6 piercing damage, and has disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of Zenkstek's turn. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and suffers no other effect. And then cleansing touch once per day. Uh, touches a creature within 5 feet of himself, can magically regain 68 hit points and gains the benefit of a lesser restoration spell. And then finally, he can shift the dagger sword's form between long sword or short sword in one hand and dagger in the other as a bonus action. Again, cool ability. Would have called it the shifting blade. Shifting blade? 
yeah, I'm dagger sword, dagger, dagger, dagger. But I think those are really cool abilities. Those are awesome abilities. This this is absolutely something that has already hit the DMs guild as a homebrew magic item. There's a, there's several homebrew magic items that have already been put on these websites because of these stat blocks. But there's a lot of interesting things going on with these stat blocks. Be sure to try and pull them for your own games. Yes. Sam, That's me. what do you like the most about these? What's your favorite? It, what's my favorite one? Which one's your favorite? Honestly, I think it might be... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not looking at them. I'm looking diagonally at your computer at them. Um, but I think it might be uh, uh, Zev. Ooh. Zev with the, the dagger. He seems the most like Zank. fun. Zank, thank you. We don't know their names yet. They're weird. They're weird D and D names. That's fine. Uh, Zank. He just seems like the most fun um, to run, especially if, if, either if it's a uh, like a one one on one uh, kind of combat that often like warrior or, uh, or martial archetype players like to go into. Yeah, this would be a fun one to put him against. Oh yeah, if you have if you have like that that cocky barbarian or uh, a, like a really well-tuned Battlemaster fighter and they want to do... And it's like a fighting pit or like some some interesting thing. Pulling out this with like the shifting weapons and then the extra flourish yeah. that each of the forms get. Uh, the fact that he just gets to do one of them every turn is really, really cool. Yeah, because um, a lot of those... One, a lot of char- creatures you would choose for one one are either way too powerful for a single character to handle or they're just kind of lame. They just yeah. have one thing that they do. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Sophina, the Wizard of Thay, uh, just because she's going to be a better uh, lich than most liches. Apparently. <laughs> uh, just, add so, just add a couple more spells onto uh, the spellcasting table. This is also a great option for if you want a lich-like enemy uh, at lower levels. There you go. Uh, it has she has 161 hit points, which is a little bit higher. Uh 17 AC with mage armor, 14 without, no legendary actions, so fairly reasonable to deal with yeah. at lower levels. Whereas Lich, the main thing the Lich has going for it, even though the individual strikes that it has are less effective, it does have the legendary actions that allow to help it out. When it comes to the player characters, though, where are you? Where are you? Uh, Chris Pine's character, Edgar Darvis. The... the the, just like that little tiny shift. First of all, the reinforced loot I find absolutely hilarious. That's hilarious. I love that. But just the disorienting words ability, the just the 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 sphere of psychic damage. That's a bard. That feels like a bard feature. The inspiring words reaction feels like a bard feature that don't exist. Yeah. And the bard, as powerful as it is, has several features that are right. that. Could use these yes. instead. Could be replaced. And I love that uh, the spell casting is all it's all charmy stuff. It's all like slimy charmy stuff. And I think this is this is a really fun NPC to include in a campaign, either as a, like an adversary for half of a combat encounter that like surrenders, or like an allied NPC or something of the like, just as a fun little change of flavor on your classic bard stat block. So check them out on D D Beyond. Under free. For free. Sources tab. Click on it. Go to... Yeah, they, they, their website's not super great. But the Thieves Gallery <laughs> on the D&D Beyond under the Sources tab. Highly recommend. Finally, we're going to talk Magic the Gathering a little bit. We've gotten a little bit uh, more information about Tales of Middle-Earth because I am obsessed with the Lord of the Rings. You are. I'm expecting you to spend all of your money. I'm going to be... Here come... June. I'm going to be spending an unnecessary amount of money. Uh, part of me wants to obtain every card in the set and put it in a binder for posterity's sake. Just film it and make it some content and I'm, d- I'm in. Yes, indeed. But the big the big thing, we know the release date. We know what things they're going to be including. You got the, you got the set boosters, draft boosters. They have starter decks mm-hmm. uh, that have arenas codes in them, gift bundles, collector's boosters, commander deck. They... All of the things that they could make, they have made for the Lord of the Rings set. The big thing is the leaks. Uh, this web article doesn't actually doesn't go into doesn't it. go into what the leaks are. They just say that they have been leaked. I know what the leaks are. The three cards that have been leaked, uh, presumably tied into. I don't think we talked about this on the last episode. I don't know if it happened yet. The have you seen the dumpster of Magic the Gathering product? 
Or the or the the landfill of the Magic the Gathering product. I have not. So presumably, someone somewhere for some reason dumped like hundreds of thousands of dollars of sealed Magic the Gathering product into a landfill. What the hell? So either like either they was put in a dumpster in boxes and then dumped, and it included like modern masters in it. Like really? it was like it was it was not cheap stuff. And there were and there was a like a I think it was a garbage disposal guy that recognized what it was. And presumably, some of these, some of the things that have been disposed of, at least from what I've been seeing in leaked images, Mm because it's like torn Torn sheets of torn sheets of cards from the Lord of the Rings set. Yeah, that's what I've seen. We get Gollum. We get a Frodo that like has multiple abilities that. In, like change his stats as he goes as he's getting more corrupted by the ring and then a partner legendary card between Aragorn and Arwen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Frodo one seems pretty cool. The Gollum one is a little bit weird. Uh, the Aragorn and Arwen one mechanically seems pretty neat as well but has stirred up a little bit of kerfuffle amongst the idiots mm-hmm. and normies of the world. Yes. Because Aragorn's black in the art which is like who cares? <laughs> I don't really care. It's new artists. They're doing new art. It's not going to look like the movies. It's not going to look like the art from the original books. It's not meant to. It's not meant to at all. Um, does the art look good? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. I can't wait to see what the full art treatments are and all this kind of... I can't wait to get these cards in my hands. I can't wait for spoiler season so I can start building decks around... Probably Aragorn and Arwen. Maybe, uh, I'm definitely building a commander deck with some version of Aragorn because he's my fucking homeboy. <laughs> he's my he's my good time boy, if you will. You're uh, my rotten you, soldier. There you go. That's all I wanted to say. And uh, but uh, also, this is the first universes beyond set that will be coming to Magic: The Gathering arenas. Oh my gosh! Absolutely. The starter decks, uh, which by the way, probably one of the best values if you want to get into Magic: The Gathering and you like Lord of the Rings, because the starter decks are twenty bucks. My books completely themed Comple- too, around around the cards that are being created for this. For Lord of the Rings, uh, it's two decks uh, ready to play in their entirety. You just have to shuffle up and play them. They also include a code card for Magic: The Gathering arenas, which gives you the entirety of both of those decks available to you on the arenas app, which is a great value. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going. I, I've already pre-ordered that just because it's twenty bucks. There I you think go. that's the easiest investment, and I get all those. I'm going to get all access to all those cards on Match of the Gathering arenas. Uh, going to be buying copious numbers of uh, the pre-release kits for the for me to have one of the code cards. But you can only redeem one pre-release code card per account. So the rest of them probably, uh, will probably be given away. away. We'll be giving them away to members of our Discord community. If you like. What we do here at Dungeon Bros HQ, you can join our Discord community. Link in the link tree in the bio of like all of our social medias is free and open to everyone. We got Magic the Gathering, we got D&D, we got people trying to be more active. Please try and be more active. <laughs> you can play games of D&D. There is one group that consistently plays a game on our D&D server. There's a looking for uh, there's a looking for group channel there. There's a lot there's a meme. We got the memes. Got all the yeah, memes. All the memes. People, people talk about Magic the Gathering, their decks, their cards, all that kind of stuff. Talking about their polls. Got some great community moderators there. Big fans. Big fans of all of them. We love you all there. But if you want pre-release code cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But just to wrap up the Magic the Gathering uh, Tales of Middle-Earth pre-order stuff that's being put out. Uh, we can expect to pay around $20 for the starter kits. $50 for the Commander decks, which are going to be four Commander decks. Uh, $50 for a bundle, $60 for a gift bundle, which is a bundle plus a collector's booster. Uh, it's going to be about $220 for a set booster box, which is which, about 350 cards. Which we, we will be buying. We will be those. buying. We will be buying one of those. And then they will, of course, be doing collector's boxes of 12 collector's boosters, which are around $460 <gasps> or $40 a pack. I will not, I will not be buying that. <laughs> well, here's the thing: um, if you want, if you want some collectors booster packs, absolutely treat yourself by buying yourself a gift bundle. Yeah, because you get one booster pack for half price with all the other stuff from the gift bundle. Yeah, like if you're trying to just collect a bunch of the cards and you want some collector boosters, but you don't want to buy like a four hundred and forty dollar collector booster box, like 
just get the gift bundles and then you're getting each collector booster at half price. Now, I will definitely be getting one of the bundles at the very least. I'll probably get I'll probably get the more expensive one for the collector booster. So mostly because more. mostly because I want to I, I, I would like I I like the box. I like I like Oh the boxes are nice? I like the bundle boxes and it'll be it'll look like the set and then I can keep the cards that are that aren't in the binder. Because I'm going I'm going to be getting a binder and I'm going to be labeling every single slot and I will be getting as many, uh, if all of the cards that I can in this set, because I am obsessed. A, I'm, I'm, a, I have a problem. <laughs> Some might say, like me, you have a problem. Yeah, you're one of them. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> but if there is a type of Magic: The Gathering product that you like, draft boosters, set booster boxes, commander decks, starter deck, literally any type of product that you like for Magic: The Gathering. There will be a version of it for the Lord of the Rings set. Yep. Except maybe, are they even doing, I think they're doing Jumpstart Boosters too. I believe they are doing Jumpstarts. So yeah, literally any version of a Magic the Gathering product you can enjoy. That being said, that is all the news items that we have for the day. The day. And we will end this podcast as we often like to do by going to both the Discord community and the TikTok live chat for questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and ideas. We do have an entire channel dedicated to this in the Discord server that people don't often post in. That being said, I do want to pop over to our Magic the Gathering channel right now. Our, our fellow creator, friend of the show, Typical Gemini, we did a bonus podcast with him talking about Magic the Gathering shortly after, or shortly before Gen Con. Yes. Before we got back into Magic the Gathering, he's been doing YouTube videos recently, doing some commander budget deck builds, and his newest one was posted today as of the recording of this, March 13th, and it is Tekathal, Inquiry Dominus, one of the Dominus cards yes. from... Phyrexia all will be one. You got it. I almost forgot the, forgot the thing. So be sure to check that out. He posted that in the in the Magic the Gathering channel. Uh, but we've been we've been hanging out. We like the Discord. There's some fun there's some fun bits. There's some fun photos and all of that. Go check it out. Uh, no comments to say for the podcast associated with the Discord community. But in the TikTok live, we do have a few in the TikTok live. It looks like. Um, all right. Two by Armstrong one. Ah, Toby Armstrong one. There it is. <laughs> asks, have you ever shot an airsoft gun at your foot? Yes. No. I'm sorry, what? Airso- shot an airsoft gun at your foot. No, you have? Yeah, absolutely. What? What? Because I was a kid. And you just want to shoot yourself? Yeah. Didn't you ever do that? I mean, I want to shoot myself, but... Um... <laughs> I never really had airsoft guns. No. Yeah. I had one that was from, uh, like, a flea market, and it broke within, like, a couple weeks. They weren't necessarily always, you know, uber well-constructed. They had had all the range of everything. You know, you could be an airsoft pro, and you could get the guns that basically are real guns. Yeah. (laughs) Or you could get the ones that uh, are safe for children, and I put safe in quotation marks, because there are idiots who shoot them at their foot. Very very well. (laughs) Uh, Rob Sagel says, been interested for years, but live in a rural, rural area, so want to learn to play. Rob, you live in a great era of the internet. Yes. Uh, is this pertaining to D&D or Magic the I believe this is D&D. In D&D, you can, if you want to play in person locally, you can find, uh, there's many Dungeons & Dragons events, either Adventure League or otherwise, available at most local game shops in most major cities in the United States. Also, if you do not want to do that, you can find uh, people in our Discord community that would like to play Magic, or play Magic the Gathering or Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, you, there's also many communities throughout the internet that you can find games to hook up with. Recently, I believe it is startplaying.games. Uh, it is a paid service where if you are a dungeon master, you can get paid to be a dungeon master and dungeon master for people, but you can find people willing to dungeon master for you. And it's like 15 bucks, 10 bucks. It's different depending on each person. You can find exactly the campaign you want to play in. If you want to play in like a call of the nether deep critical role style campaign, if you want to play in Dragonlance, Theros, that's all available pretty much any time slot that would work for you. You can find someone that is running the game you want to play and if you are willing to pay 10, 15, 20 bucks to play some D&D, that is also an option as well. There you go. Um, Adam Hello says, you a brother. 
Thanks, Adam. Hey. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We have MTG Dad. MTG Dad sounds like a guy we'd we'd, uh, we'd be friends with. We call we call a lot of people Daddy. We so do. I don't know. And Father. We've got. I think we have we have Big Daddy Velvet. We have Father Lichen. We have Father Lichen. We do not have a Papa. We do not have a Dad. I feel like if uh, if they were going to call anybody a Dad, uh, typical should be Dad. Dad, typical Gemini. Typical Dad. Typical Dad. Typical Dad. There we go. So we need a Papa. Well, MTG pa- MTG Papa. MTG Papa. All right, fine. All right. And MTG Dad says, what class of character would Mr. Bean be? Mr. Bean. Wow. I've not seen any of the Mr. Bean movies. I'm going to uh, I mean, it's been a very long time for me. He would definitely not be... I want to say he wouldn't be a spellcaster. He'd probably be like a... Mm, he'd probably be like a drunken master monk or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that... Just kind of like, like happening into stuff. Or, like, a halfling with the lucky feet. Basically any class. <laughs> like, an unclassed halfling with the lucky feet, I think, is Mr. Bean, to a T. All right. <laughs> that might piss some people off, but there you go. He's a short, little, lucky man. What can I say? Never uh, gets to re-roll those nat ones. There you go. Uh, Game Lord Morton. Says, hey, we know Game Lord. Says, hey, what's up? Well, Not Game much, Lord. Game Lord. He, uh, a frequent viewer of our Magic the Gathering live streams Monday nights on TikTok. MTG said, Dad says, fair, fair to our Mr. Bean. Yes. Uh, Terong Guy says, most important Terong question guy. of the day, what was your first character you've ever played, name, race, class? <laughs> One session of this player, of this, of this character at level three, it was a game that I was playing with Mr. Samuel. Uh, it was Geralt, a level three uh, thief rogue, and we never got out of the bar. You fell out of a window at one point. I did fall out of a window. I did try and feed a wolf under a door because there was a ranger. I think she also right. fell out of the window. She also fell out of the window. Trying to chase you. Yeah. When you fell out the window. And, then, and inexplicably, that campaign immediately ended after that. <laughs> The first one I ever played was Jack Thorne. He was a halfling, and but this was back. This was a version of AD and D. This was like a the, what Pathfinder is to three point five. Mm-hmm. This was to AD and D, um, and in that one, your race basically was your class, and so halfling was kind of somewhere between ranger and druid in this thing. So I had a I had a wolf in, or no I had a um, Mastiff. We were a Matt. Mastiff in that one. Mastiff Buddy. Mastiff Buddy. Uh, again, one session only. Uh, we were going to do it. It was like, oh, we should do more. But then I lived in Cincinnati, and the DM lived in Columbus, and everybody else lived in the middle. Um, so, yeah, that never happened again. Uh, in my first 5e game that I didn't run, that I played in, I was doing a homebrew thing that was really bad. Yeah, that tends to be how that goes. If you want, if you want homebrew things that aren't bad... Ooh. Go to the drive through RPG link in the link tree in the bio where you can get access to all of our free subclasses, magic items, spells, as well as the compendium, which includes all, all of those. them, plus some selections from our Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement. Both the Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement as well as the bundle. Four ninety nine each. The Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement's got some cool stuff. I want to play that monk. I want to play that Blood Magic <laughs> monk that we made at some point. I mean, definitely, you know, maybe at, maybe at some point we'll play an actual game we, again. We made, we, th- there were plans forever ago to do a 24-hour game with the, the role-playing degenerates. Yeah, that never happened. That never happened. That was, that, that was a, that was a big undertaking. That was going to be a very large undertaking, for and sure. it was never took. Never took. Never took. It was pandemic times. So it was rough. Indeed. It was hard. It but was hard. that's all the questions in the that's all, TikTok. That, that's all the questions we got from the TikTok. Um... We're going to be clocking in about an hour for this podcast, a little bit under an hour. One of our shorter things, not too much to talk about right now. All the news is taken up with previews of the Dungeons and Dragons movie that we don't want to get too far into because of spoiler reasons. Uh, but there are some cool offerings there. Be sure to check out the link in the link tree in the bio for our Instagram, our YouTube, where we've been making, Samuel has been making some wonderful D&D and MTG shorts and reels mm-hmm. going over some rules and mechanics, which is a very fun time. 
Got some videos in the works. One of them is almost done. I need to finish. Uh, several more ideas as well for the YouTubes. Check out the Drive Through RPG. Check out the Discord. The Amazon Affiliate Store with all the stuff that we do for our MTG streams as well as some various other things. And uh, the official dice sponsor of the Dungeon Pros, the Found Familiar, Found Familiar Dice. dice. <laughs> Found Familiar Dice. Official in that they have sent us things. And that is it. And we like them. And we like him. He's a cool dude. Yeah. We, we still need to reschedule a, a, a podcast with him. We'll get there. We will, someday, you will hear a special bonus episode of this podcast. For sure. For sure. It might be, it might be next week. It might be six months from now. It might be three years. We We're don't know. Predictable. It might, it might be in 2065. Probably not. I would hope, I would hope that we're not that deep into this and still trying to get him to <laughs> still trying to get the schedule Just to work. over the next 40 uh what 42 years we cannot meet up we cannot find an hour to hang out here <laughs> and talk yes yes but if you are watching the podcast live right now we'll be going live tonight with magic the gathering stream we've been doing jump start packs on tiktok every monday night in addition to playing a little bit of two-player commander you can find us there on mondays we're getting back into the swing of posting TikToks more regularly. Uh, life life hasn't really calmed down, but we're just feeling more motivated and less jaded about everything. Yeah, we're digging in. We're getting back in. We're getting excited about magic. We're getting excited about D&D. And we hope that you are too. Yes. And we love you very much. We'll see you in the next episode. And in the meantime. <laughs>